What's up guys? Welcome to Anime Kahai. If you'd like to help me out, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Despite the fact that he didn't really stand out from the group and had a friendly appearance and glasses, Gabble called him out without even the least hesitation. You there, I command you to fight me. That man there. The man with the spectacles smiled when Gabble pointed the spear at him. Well, it looks like this. I was pretending to be a regular intelligence officer, but I was caught by someone who could see right through me. The man removed his glasses as he said this. The atmosphere around the man altered instantly after that. In that case, it's impossible to avoid it. Therefore, please accept me as your adversary. But first, my seniors, please leave this area. The man's customary timidity had vanished as he directed those around him. However, his bewildered friends did not take this well. Hey, Marco, are you sure you're cut out for fighting? Yeah, stop acting so tough, you're weaker than us. Upon hearing his friend's anxious comments, the man going by the name of Marco grinned back. Ah well, it was a really cozy workplace, but that was only a facade. Actually, I'm a member of the single digits, number 8 to be exact. Do you know what that means? Everyone realized that Marco had been pretending to be a friendly intelligence officer after noticing how their peers' behavior had changed. They realized that he had the authority to command them and that what he had just said was accurate. Understood. Best of luck. Marco's companions dispersed. He exhaled a breath of relief and turned to Gabble with his squinting, serpentine eyes. He had also seen Gabble's capabilities for what they were. In this world, attempting to face a truly exceptional warrior with overwhelming numbers was usually futile. Despite the fact that some of the others were skilled to the level of an imperial knight, Marco pushed the rest of the group away from him. So, you're Gabil. Well, I appreciate you taking my job away. You understand that you will pay for that with your life. <laughs> the single digits were mentioned to me by Sir Rimuru. I believe he mentioned that even he thought they were dangerous, but now I've been given the opportunity to handle one on my own. Gabble sounded ecstatic, and at that moment the battle between these two great heroes started. Marco was a man who stood out for his lack of distinguishing traits. About 800 years ago, he was made an imperial knight. Damrata, the commander at the moment, had noticed him since he had the unique skill, impersonator, which was focused on undercover work. The impersonator, unique skill had a notable power. It was the capacity to change into a precise replica of the person he saw. It could completely replicate the same person, unlike Hanada's unique skill, usurper, which could just duplicate a person. His ability to mimic had a limit though. He couldn't copy everything if the target was substantially more powerful than he was, that was its flaw. But even so, the more strong individuals he encountered, the more adaptable their strength became. That was the reason Marco, after overcoming a major crisis and becoming a saint, had advanced to the rank of a single digit. About a century had passed since Marco had become an imperial knight at that point. The reason Marco was so in awe of Kandu was precisely because of this. Even though he was a visitor from another world and had a soul that was more potent than most people's, his strength was still hard to fathom. Marco was the first opponent Kandu faced in the rank battles. Marco came into contact with Kandu's incredible strength during that battle. He had always believed that Kandu was the emperor's favorite, but he now understood that he had been mistaken. Even Marco, a saint, who had the unique skill, impersonator, could not match Kandu's fighting prowess. With the use of this skill, Kandu quickly overcame the best warriors to become a commander. Even the four horsemen, who in Marco's opinion were all monsters, had been easily vanquished by Kondo. Marco worshipped Kandu as a result. He even served as an equivalent rank and file second lieutenant in the empire, following Kondo's lead in maintaining his lieutenant status. Just to help Kandu, he had remained in the intelligence bureau. Marco was now up against the formidable gabble. He used a spear to fight back as well, but he soon recognized that the situation would not allow him to prevail. Because of this, Marco made the decision to transform into the person he thought to be the strongest. Marco moved away from Gabble and assumed the form of Kandu. It was possible to change with even more accuracy by combining the unique skill, impersonator, with the ultimate enchantment, alternative, which the emperor had lent. The new Marco was almost as powerful as Kandu. Wow, that's odd. Is that how you actually look? Marco, under the guise of Kandu, responded to Gabble's question. No. I think the strongest man I know is represented by this figure. Even though the four horsemen were powerful, Lieutenant Kandu was stronger. In actuality, Marco looked over at the adjacent battleground before continuing. Even the famed champion, His Majesty King Gazel, appears to be no match for him. Gabble heard this and let out a low groan. He was aware, thanks to his extensive magic perception, that the Allied forces were struggling. 
Hakuro had fled the front lines, and King Gazel was having difficulties, as had just been mentioned. Hmm, it seems to be so. There was no question that we would triumph as soon as Lieutenant Kondu showed up. I didn't want to bother showing my hand because of this. You always want to keep your power secret because you never know where the leak will originate, right? Marco switched from using a spear to a sword with that carefree question. Marco's legendary level armor now has the ability to alter shape at will. In his Kondu form, Marco was holding a sword. He had an elegant appearance. Gabble also possessed a magical weapon known as the Vortex Spear, which was the Lizardmen's treasure. He was now familiar with the spear that his father, Abel, had entrusted to him. The spear had been damaged in a number of violent battles and had been reforged by Karabe. Although its performance was of a unique caliber, it had been a very trustworthy partner. Even so, it didn't quite reach legendary status. It is true that differences in weapon performance play a role in determining the victor, and in this instance, Gabble was much outmatched. Gabble, however, also possessed a dragon skin that was powerful enough to be classified as mythical. Gabble thought his adversary was a saint and on par with his awakened self. Gabble gave it everything and didn't hold back from the start for this reason. Is it possible for this individual to get past my defenses? Gabble felt secure in his ability to defend. A fight could not be won unless one could deal their opponent significant damage. No matter how many blows you delivered, if they did not result in death, they were useless. Gabble believed that his defenses would be too strong for Marco's weapon to penetrate, but he was not going to let his guard down and was closely observing his opponent's movements. All right, here I go. Bring it on. Gabble's mistake was that he became hostile to Marco too quickly. He had awakened a great power, but he had not yet used it to its fullest potential. Gabble had not used his magicules effectively enough, as Ultima had feared, even in his pre-evolutionary stage. Even with so immense power at his disposal, Gabble was unable to fully exploit it. High defense and the ability to heal were already powerful enough on their own, but this time, his adversary was too strong. Gakatatsu. Vortex Crash. Gabble's cautious approach allowed him to survive. Strength-wise, the two were comparable, or Gabble was significantly stronger. Marco, who was emulating Kondu, was significantly more proficient, nevertheless. Actually, Marco was unable to duplicate even 80% of Lieutenant Kondu's skills. If Gazel had been his opponent, he would undoubtedly have lost because the ultimate skill, Conviction King Sandalfon, was impossible to duplicate. In terms of physical strength, Gabble and Marco were on equal footing. Gabble's victory would have been certain in terms of defense. Victory or defeat was entirely determined by chance. Marco's triumph was paper thin even though it appeared to be a landslide. Goodness, I can't hold Major General Faraga responsible. Wasn't it Draco Lord Gubbil? It's understandable why you mistook him for Veldora. Gabble was falling to the ground when Marco muttered, staring at him. Gabble's fate appeared to be ending at exactly this moment. Brother! Several shadows appeared before Marco as if to defend Gabble. The first ones on the scene were Soka and the others. They were followed by Gabble's subordinates. Sir Gabble. Gabble, don't die. I. This is not the place for Sir Gabble to die. They ventured to confront Marco even though they knew they couldn't win. Gabble's life was spared by that bravery. These individuals weren't able to compete with Marco, a saint, on their own, but they were nonetheless special A rank skills. In a frantic attempt to buy some time, they utilized healing potions liberally. However, Marco's technique, which was influenced by Kondu, used his skilled fighting aura to annihilate the adversary from the inside out. Soka and her aides had to be ready to die because it nullified the effectiveness of the healing potions. Then another of Gabble's subordinates collapsed. Then Nanso, Soka's subordinate, collapsed. The gap in raw power was too great, despite the fact that there was not a significant difference in proficiency. Additionally, Marco's weapon was of legendary caliber. The unavoidable strength disparity caused each of them to fall one by one. Luckily, no one had died yet. The people connected to Gabble had grown more powerful as a result of Rimuru's evolution of Gabble. They were now more resilient as a result, and they narrowly avoided suffering deadly wounds. However, the aftereffects of Marco's attacks prevented them from rejoining the battle, so they were unable to return to the front lines. They were all going to die eventually at this rate. This is why Gabble yelled. Enough, enough, leave immediately. That's in order, Soka. Get everyone out of here. Gabble, who was attempting to stand up, looked at Soka. But Soka bravely smiled while refusing to even look at Gabble. Brother, I object. I am Sir Soi subordinate, so I am not required to follow your instructions. What are you talking about? Besides, we will end up with dead people if we flee at this time. You, brother, shall perish as well. 
In contrast to her usual demeanor, Soka shouted loudly. What are you talking about? Gabble was perplexed and unable to speak. Isn't it the commander's responsibility to minimize casualties as much as possible? Isn't it your job to make more people survive and leave me behind since I lost? Gabble found it tough to stand up at this time. He struggled to speak out as he observed his companions engaged in combat. Soka, however, disregarded those remarks. So my strategy is the best one. Nobody here is weak enough to be slain by a single strike. We will buy ourselves some time as a result. Refusing to stop fighting despite a fallen comrade, Marco is being fought with numbers while being careful to avoid casualties. Soka and the others did this in an effort to increase their chances of winning. This is stupid. There is no assurance that assistance will arrive. Additional assistance could not be anticipated at this point because Rimuru and the other executives were on their journey to the imperial capital. The other executives wouldn't be able to conveniently hurry over here even if they woke up from their slumber. They were relying on three demon girls to deal with Velgrind, a far more formidable foe. There was no way they could beg for assistance because they were the ones who required it. Gabble was aware of this and had come to the conclusion that he was powerless to do anything but flee. The ones who objected, though, were Gabble's subordinates. It's you, Gabble. We're waiting for you. You're correct, Sir Gabble. You're hurt, get well soon, and stand up. Aye. While we wait for Sir Gabble's return, we will buy some time. That's the only way to save everybody in this place. When Gabble heard this, he felt guilty. He questioned whether he had given up on winning on his own. What have I been up to? Okay then, hold your ground till I stand up, everyone. Gabble yelled, fully aware of what a ridiculous order that was. He let out hot tears that perfectly captured Gabble's emotions. Those who didn't give up would not be abandoned by the goddess of victory. Gabble's voice drew a response. Oh no, you're still careless, aren't you? Please allow this humble self to assist you here. I'm going to help him because my lady told me to. She won't let her prized toy, Sir Gabble, die. Veyron and Zonda, the servants of Ultima, had appeared out of nowhere. Zonda muttered. Although it would be better for us if you didn't survive. But the noise of the combat was too loud for Gabble to hear. That was incredibly fortunate. Veyron joined Soka while assuming the appearance of a butler. Hey anime fans! Episode 7 of Solo Leveling is now live on Anime Fan Narrations. Don't miss out on the latest action as Jinwoo faces new challenges. Find the link in the description box. That's it for this video guys. Thank you for always watching my videos and supporting my channel. Shout out to the new members of Anime Kohai supporters. Jerry Sladek, Efrain Hernandez, Luca Gaming WTF, Jordan Mercia, Jay Magsino, Recruil17, Bismarck Munoz, Orion Booker, Saagar Kotecha, Kamal Luke. Thank you so much for helping out. I'll see you guys in the next video.